So my sister Lana laid out some of the basic tenets of her work about trying to work at the intersections of queer phobia, Islamophobia, homophobia, all the phobias you can possibly think of. And I'm going to just share a little bit of my own personal experience in working across these lines. So my name is Yasser Islam, and for my last name, yes, I am Muslim. I was, um, I'm of Indian origin, I was born and raised in Africa, and I went to school in British schools growing up. Um, I moved to the US, and now a US citizen. And all along the way growing up, I've had to sort of deal with the complicated issues of so many intersections. Uh, when I was young and went to India, I wasn't Indian enough because I was growing up in Africa. When I was in Africa, I didn't quite fit in. A lot of divisions between communities there. And then in the United States, being brown, I'm a hyphenated American. So I get asked always, where am I from? Partly because of the accent. When I say I'm originally from India, people say, well, you don't look Indian. And I say, well, there's one billion of us. How would you purport to know whether I look Indian or not? And then we add to it uh, the homophobia. And um, growing up Muslim was challenging and trying to assert my identity as a gay man. And uh, as a result, I distanced myself from the religion and had to come up with my own sort of definition. So the last 10, 15 years have been very tough for Muslims everywhere. The rampant post 9-11 Islamophobia resulting from our actions for at least a decade or two or three overseas came back and bit us in the butt. And Muslims everywhere suffered the consequences, whether they were religious or secular, or even if they weren't even Muslims, but looked it. So, the only way I've been able to deal, in a sense, with negotiating these intersections is not to be bitter and to realize that um, education, information, and sharing across boundaries is the only way I can maintain my sanity and uh, my faith in myself and in, in, and in all of you, our humankind. So, just to share a few things I learned along the way, as I thought very hard about this, um, you know, the word intersections, right? The first thing that came to mind to me was, you know, traffic intersections. <laughs> we're in those every day and you know you get up there you wait to see who's there first you let them go you make eye contact you interact and there's sort of some civility and order to those proceedings so we don't go running into each other but what's happening now is people are running through the lights they're running each of us over and that discourse is gone but we have to remember that really when I get to a point of intersection a point of privilege and on the other side is I really have to recognize that I have to reach over and put a hand out Anger won't do it, fear won't do it, name calling, even if I am called names, will not do it. Words like fanatical, hateful, all the different phobias can also be damaging. So to that extent, a friend of mine here tonight reminded me that it's, when we're privileged, it's really important to, to state our identities and not minimize those differences and distinctions, especially if we're reaching across the line. Even as a gay male or as a Muslim male, I have privileges as a male, so there may be times when I really need to say, you know what, as a gay man or as a gay Muslim man or whatever it may be, I'd really like to know how you feel or what you think about this, that and the other. And that is a way then to really cross the divide and to find some commonality on the other side. It's one that's worked well for me, even when people ask me very ignorant questions. I recognize that not everyone in the U.S. has had exposure to broad cultures and religions, and so it's my job to try and do that as respectfully as I can, to the extent that I can. He suddenly went quiet. Do one one more here. I have Brenda Lee Mar Pardon. McCool. Brenda Lee Marquez McCool yeah. into the ring with cancer twice and beat it both times. She was a fighter, said Noreen Vacquer, who met her as a Brooklyn kindergartner. She doesn't take nothing from nobody. Her longtime friend said McCool 49 stuck up for herself for her friends, and for the 12 children she raised. It was one of those children, a son, who went out with her to dance the night away at Pulse Nightclub. Just after midnight, McCool uploaded a Facebook video of couples twirling to Latin music on a crowded dance floor. 
how about this little light of mine and think of the person whose heart you are holding as your light. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Across the NRA, across the NRA. Across the NRA, we're gonna let it shine. Across the NRA, we're gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. No more gun violence, no more gun violence. I'm gonna let it shine. No more. Okay, one last little light of mine with feeling. This little light of mine, we're gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, we're gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, we're gonna let it shine. Let it shine.